football we have had so far. Another game to come, of course. We can complete a little more of the quarter-final picture now. And it's England who will play Switzerland next Saturday with a five o'clock kickoff in Dusseldorf. And that match, of course, will be live here on RTE2 and indeed on the RTE Clare. Remarkable stuff. And England are through. Uh, Gareth Southgate will get to his 100th game in charge of England. It'll be against Switzerland. So, gentlemen, do you give him credit for that, or is he simply a lucky general? <sighs> <laughs> it was a tough watch, Tony. Listen, he stuck with tried and trusted players who got him out of trouble in the end. In fairness to Harry Kane, he couldn't run out of his own way for the game, but was there to, in a big, big moment to score the goal. It wasn't pretty from England. And then, for the remainder of extra time, Slovakia dominated. Um, I know, listen, that's the run of the game, and England are wanting to defend their lead, but you felt if that happened about them at all, it would have gone and got another. Um, Slovakia looked dead on their feet. Uh, this, they made Slovakia look good to me. The Slovakia team who drew at Romania, got beat 2-1 by Ukraine. You know, we're, we're 10 seconds away from going to the uh, quarter-final. But listen, they're true. I find this ironic, sweet Caroline, as if they had won something. Uh, Harry Kane asking the, the team to go down to the, where the English fans are gathered. And now they're trying to win back their affection, is it? You, you can't criticise any of the players or the manager for this. This is the nature of football at this level. Those fans were loudly jeering and booing the England players from a half hour onwards. And had Bellingham not done what he did in the 95th minute, the scene would be very different. Everyone would be calling for the manager to leave. Those players would be vilified, mocked in the press. And every stadium they go to next season, they'll be reminded of their failing when it mattered most. That's gone now. They delivered. Won't they still be asking the manager to leave? Won't there be parts of the rather hostile British media that will say enough is enough? Ah, yeah, but at the, the mid-tournament, there's going to be no change. Those... Those... ..could be ignored, those voices at this stage. But I think their criticisms will be understandable because... We'll show action in a moment of the performance. Again, do, do you sit here and talk about the performance or do you focus only on the fact that they won a knockout game and are in the quarter-final? If you go with the latter, there's not much ground for criticism because well, you can come out with all the cliches but, and say, uh, Richie, when it talking, mattered, we got Talking through. to footballers for so long, and particularly successful footballers and successful teams say, it's a wonderful thing to win when you're not playing well. That's what wins you championships, not just defences. But playing poorly in 100% of your games up until the quarter-final, I don't think makes you feel good about going into that quarter-final. You're glad you're there, but everyone outside can be a little bit more objective and fair and critical and say that if it took 95 minutes for that collection of players to get a shot on target and for a long time in the second half we weren't expecting them those scenes I think there's huge questions for the manager and the players still they're, they're not questions for now they'll be delighted and they should celebrate the fans should have a great night and they should look forward to Saturday we're all envious of them that they're in that position but there's still huge questions about how that group of players can be putting out performances like that Bellingham possibly shouldn't have been on the pitch, but he came up with the goods, didn't he? I mean, that was a beautiful moment. Yeah. A what do we love football? This a long throw-in. All the players they have on that team, footballers, it takes a set piece, a long throw-in. Great. I think it's Gay who wins the header. Fabulous flick on. Really important. And then that. For him to do that, in that at that time of the game, how tired mentally and physically to be able to still get his body in that position, technique. Fabulous, fabulous goal from... Listen, he's been quiet in the tournament. He, he played the first, half, the first half hour of the first game. He was very good. He did what he did best, got into the box, scored a header. And this is a key moment. A key moment. He's a top player and he's probably the only one on the pitch who could do what he did there. You could say similar to about, about Kane, though. He hasn't had a good game. He, you could probably say he hasn't had a good tournament. And yet he's, he's there when you need him. Yeah, it's... it's, it's... You know, we've been asking for the last fortnight, where exactly does he fit into the system? What's his role? How are they getting the best out of him and all the skills and the traits that he has? Those moments like this, you, you, you want him in the team because you know he'll pick up a position. 
and he'll anticipate the chance there like he did but it, it, it was up until that point a kind of a quietish performance again from him to talk of in the build up about his energy levels his fitness levels he ended the game ended the season missing a few games because of an injury has he fully recovered from that but again these are the scenes that will matter most to the english players okay but why is it that england have underperformed i mean they've won again mm. we've taken it as right but they have underperformed we've talked about fatigue we've talked about the number of games that mm. they they might play in the premier league or la liga but a lot of other countries have mm. have similar game times i think that, that there's a few things they're, they're not a team that play with much tempo or much energy. And w one of the things when you play against a team that don't play with much pace, they, they don't cause you too much problems. England caused themselves problems here. This is footage from throughout the two hours of football. We just think, remember that these are favourites now. These are individuals who have been brilliant all season away from this group and on their own at club level. And you think, what are you doing here to cause Slovakia a problem? How quickly are you moving the ball? How worried do you think Slovakia are if this is what you do when you have the ball? And in the second half of normal time, you think they know they need to create something. Remind yourself again of the individual brilliance of the players in attacking areas. This is what they were coming up with. Launching balls into the box at targets that were fairly static up against defences that were outnumbering them. Really routine catch there for the goalkeeper. Dead ball here, how much are you going to trouble them? Not at all. And then Rice is the ball in the middle of the park. Can you create something? Can you do triangles, balls around to get past the players? They can't even do that. So it was really, really poor. So again, you can sit there and talk about him being lucky or not, too conservative or not, correctly not taking the players off and a lot of people thought he should have done. But it's yet another really bafflingly poor performance from a group of players that are way better than that. We talked about shade and fraud at the very beginning of the programme, uh, delighting other people's misery. Well, it's uh, shade and fraud, non-danka uh, for Gareth Southgate.